is up everybody james jackson here back again with another video you're new to my channel i do tips and tricks and also give you news updates for the film and video making industry so if you do like the content here please subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you can stay up to date on all the content going forth man early morning today uh i'm up early this morning because uh something broke and i was just like i gotta uh pass it on and let you guys know you to, to announce it to you guys if you haven't heard uh right now Confinity just a, like a little bit over a couple hours ago announced their brand new camera and that is the Mavo uh Confinity Mavo Edge and this camera is going to be a camera that so many people are sort of very very interested in hearing currently right now i am watching the live stream of pro av tv's interview with june um the ceo of confinity so you can definitely i would say definitely head over to pro av tv to dive in to get a more dive in in depth about it um but the specs that have been announced are very very interesting the resolution war in terms of the video uh video life has begun so not uh just literally over a week ago less than a, like yeah a week ago canon came out and announced the first mirrorless small body well no not small body but the first mirrorless camera to come with an 8k video camera uh before that there was not that many 8k cameras you had the red the two red cameras the helium and the monstro and then you had um and then you had uh, third parties like z cam that had a full frame ak camera well now confinity is coming into this market with their uh mavo edge and this is a of large format 8k camera it's a full frame camera 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters so it is a two-thirds um full frame video camera and the specs on this are very interesting. So, the most inter uh, so the first interesting thing is it's going to allow you to shoot ProRes 444 12 bit or 10 bit 422 ProRes HQ in all formats. So 8K, 6K, open gate, anamorphic, all the all the different flavors that you can record in you can record in ProRes. But the kicker of this camera is this is the second camera in the world to be able to record ProRes RAW internally. The only other camera that can do it is the camera that comes with the Inspire drone. Outside of that, this is the only other camera in the world right now that can record ProRes RAW internally without the need of an Atomos recorder. So that's pretty big news let's pull up the resolutions and see what we can do so uh you can record 8k if you go to the uh wide format so the two by four by one aspect ratio you rec can record up to 75 frames per second however if you use the full width of the in terms in dci you can go up to 8k up to 60 frames per second i did mention that there is an open gate so you can use the full open gate if you're doing any sort of anamorphic shooting with three two uh, anamorphics you can record uh up to 48 frames per second in that 8k open gate so that is a really really great thing um the other thing is it can record 6k up to 100 frames per second now you will have to crop in to do this but it can record 6k up to 100 frames per second uh, I believe you have to crop into Super 35. It can record uh, 5K up to 120 frames per second. Again, Super 35 crop. And then uh, in 2K, you can re record up to 300 frames per second. But that is a different crop. Um, which uh, I believe it's like a Super 16, if I remember correctly. It may be a different, it may be a different crop. But you will have to crop in. Um, so... A uh, couple things that have changed from the Mavo L LF, which was their full frame 6K sensor. This body is going to be a carbon fiber body, which is a really, really interesting choice. Uh, it's going to, which means it's going to be very, very durable, but also very, very light. So if you, 
So being able to put this on gimbals is going to be done without a hitch at all. So I'm really interested to see how the carbon fiber handles all that heat that this camera is going to be. Uh, there's a lot about this body that I really like that they've changed. The One of the things they have changed is that this body now, uh, the V-mount lock is now on the body itself. You don't have to buy the external modular units with this one. Uh, the V-lock plate is literally on the back of it. It also has a BP style as well on the back. So you can choose between BP uh, batteries or you can choose between V-lock style batteries, which would probably be my preferred way. They're the most reliable. They'll give you the longest life. But there is an actual and interesting and unique thing that they have done uh, with this camera, and that is they built a plate, like a, 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 a mount plate, on the, that can go at the bottom and what's cool about it is that there's a little opening that you can put uh sony uh mpf batteries small sony mpf batteries put two of them in there so if you want to if you need to switch your battery your v-mount battery out or your bp battery out you can basically hot swap them without having to stop recording so great 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 ergonomic features uh that I think is um, a really, really amazing thing. I, one of the things I, I, I met Kenfinity um, at NAB last year, and one of the things I've always admired about them was their way of innovating and really reimagining how filmmaking and how cinematographers can operate cameras so, and things that still make the workflow go really well. So that's one of the things. The other thing they have changed, they have changed the recording media. So they're not using SATA SSDs this time around like they did in their previous models. They're, use, they're now moving to the new M2 SSD, bat, uh, SSD cards, which they were going to have to do something like that anyway. The only other option they would have had to do was go to CF Express. Um, but with M2, they'll still be able to, you know, br uh, bring a affordable option to the camera and basically to be able to put out the data rate needed. And I think M2 is a, it's a great move to go to M2. And what's cool about it is because M2 is a lot smaller than typical SATM SSDs, you can actually now put two M2, so you can do hot swaps or you can do uh, dual recordings with this camera. So nice, nice, nice addition to the camera. So just like on the Mavic LF, there is a dual native ISO. However, the dual native ISO is not as high as the Mavo LF. Um, so in this case, the dual native ISOs are 800 and 3200 compared to the 800 and 5000 ISO that was on the Mavo LF, which I, to be perfectly honest, totally makes sense since this is a larger uh, megapixel uh, sensor. This is a 45 megapixel sensor. It totally makes sense for the simple fact that you put more pixels into a sensor in order to get more resolution, you generate more noise, which probably means that the dual out the gain output can only can only save so much, so they dropped it down to 3,200. That's my guess on it. Um, again, it's hypothetical, but I, if I had to take a guess, that's what it would be. So the and then finally, there is one additional feature that they put in that is really really cool, and that is the fact that they now have an electronic. ND filter built into the mount, the Kenny mount. So now you can actually have built-in NDs into the camera itself. It's a very interesting and exciting feature to have. I'm always going to praise a, a camera that puts in built-in NDs because I cannot tell you how much I can't stand trying to screw on NDs and hot swapping that way. So as you guys can see, there's a lot of really, really, really excited features come to it. Um, and the thing, of, and so right now it is priced to be twelve thousand euros. Um, I don't know. So roughly at, at this point in time, the it's going to be about thirteen thousand dollars in terms of U.S. Um, I don't know if they're going to set a U.S. price because they still don't have a U.S. dealership at this point. They do have a rental house in Burbank, California. 
But in terms of uh, U.S. dealerships, they're, they are still working on getting that done. Um, hopefully, they can get that done by the time this camera comes out. So, we got another 8K camera. Very exciting specs. Is this something that I personally going to be looking at? Well, at this point in time, not likely. And honestly, outside of one thing, it, everything else is really about outside factors, not necessarily to the camera itself. The camera is great. ProRes, uh, ProRes built in internally, one of the best codecs to work with in all terms of platforms. And then you got the new ProRes RAW. But the ProRes RAW is probably one of the big reasons why. Uh, for me to drop uh, money to look at a camera in that marketplace, I need to have my RAW internally, which it is. But the problem with ProRes RAW, it is extremely limited and it's really early in its um, life cycle. And it's not flexible. It is not a flexible codec as much as I would want it to be in terms of control. So the problem with ProRes RAW is one, uh, there really isn't that many NLEs that can take it. Right now, I do, they, they announced they're gonna put it in Avid and uh, Premiere. So right now in Premiere, it's only in Premiere Beta. So it's a whole different application uh, that you can use to get access to it. But even in that one, the only thing you can change in terms of metadata is the exposure. That's it. That is it. That is the only thing you can change. Everything else is baked in. Information that you're going to have to bake in and change directly. Now, does this mean that all that other information is baked in? No, it just means in the current uh, phase of ProRes RAW, that is the only amount of metadata you could control. They can, oh, they can probably add more to it later down the line. So Premiere is out. I don't want to, I can't do Final Cut because Final Cut is only doing Mac and I am not going to be working with a Mac computer anytime soon. So that's out. Avid is still not ready to work with ProRes RAW and I, we don't know if they'll ever come with DaVinci Resolve. I, you know, that would be nice, but we don't know. There, right now, I haven't heard any plans of it come, of ProRes RAW coming to DaVinci Resolve. So the RAW, in, for me personally, at this point in time is useless. It is completely useless. So that's number one. The other thing is just there's not a U.S. dealership at this point in time. Again, this could change by the time the camera comes out. In this point in time, there's no dealership in the United States. So that sort of makes it a, a non uh, a, a deal breaker for me. And again, I, I, I don't want that to be because I really do like Confinity and I really love what they're doing. But I... Uh, I can't, having a dealership or having somebody that I can take in if something was to go wrong with the camera instead of shipping it all the way to China or shipping it all the way to the UK, which would probably be in my end the closest um, the closest place for in terms of services. So until Confinity works something out, um, I I can't consider this camera. Though so it is a camera I am going to be seriously watching with great interest uh, as, we, as it comes out and as it goes out into the world. And finally, the main thing that in terms of things that the camera is missing that is really a potential deal breaker for me is the fact that it doesn't have any autofocus, continuous autofocus. Uh, I know the filmmaker people in the comments are going to make a big deal. Like, pros don't use autofocus. Again, I've already made my uh, voice about it. Everybody uses autofocus. It's just how you use it. It's a tool. Anyways, digress. But for me, to, for a camera not to have continuous autofocus is a no-go for me. At least a camera in, in this price bracket. Even Red knows this, and that's why they're implementing uh, face, uh, face detection autofocus in their Komodo. But these are my thoughts. Uh, definitely a very nice and interesting camera. I'm really excited to see how it's developed. What do you guys think about this camera? Let me know what you think. Leave a like, leave a comment below. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, take care, everyone.